is the Emergency Medical Minute. So I was going to talk a little bit about blunt head trauma. So as a springboard to uh, the evaluation of this specific type of intracranial bleed, I was going to give you a bit of a case vignette. We'll talk about the differential, talk about the specific case as far as what we see, uh, how it's treated, uh, and what the operative indications are. So uh, if a 67-year-old male comes in, status post major MAC MVA, uh, GCS as far as uh, uh, traumatic brain injury uh, comes in with a GCS of 12. Uh, so anything less than 13 is considered moderate head trauma, not minor head trauma. So has moderate head trauma manifesting with a GCS of 12, uh, had a loss of consciousness, no seizure, and was not on any anticoagulants. So clearly, one of the things we're going to be doing as far as evaluating that is a CAT scan of the head. So what are the different types of injuries uh, that you've seen that we're actually specifically evaluating for? What's that? Epidural hematoma, great. Subdural hema, subarachnoid, and intracerebral, yeah. So those, uh, I would add things like uh, skull fracture or depressed skull fracture, but as far as intracranial bleeds, mainly there's those four that we just mentioned, epidural, subdural, uh, subarachnoid, traumatic subarachnoid, and then uh, uh, interparenchymal, either contusion or hemorrhage, right? And each of them has different characteristics on a CAT scan. So uh, what, here's the non-con uh, CAT scan of the head, uh, and you see a uh, significant area of hyperattenuation there along the right fronto, uh, Temporo uh, and extending somewhat parietally, uh, convexity. Uh, what what kind of bleed is that? Subdural? Is that what you said? No. Uh, no. So it's yeah, it's a subdural. So you know, systematically, if if it's an epidural, it's usually a convex lens. Usually, it's in the temporal area because the middle meningeal artery. Eighty percent of the uh, epidurals go and they rupture the uh, epidural artery, and because uh, it's outside of the dura, it forms a lens. It doesn't go like a subdural uh, along uh, like a uh, concave uh, uh, lens. It, it's underneath the dura, uh, so it just sort of pooches it out, right? So they're both sort of considered lens-shaped. Epidurals tend to be somewhat smaller, uh, but they have a very characteristic uh, convex lens shape, uh, shape to them. Um, subarachnoid blood is usually in the subarachnoid space. Uh, that's sort of in this area here on some lower cuts. Uh, intraparenchymal is exactly what it sounds like. The parenchyma uh, is the tissue of the brain, so it would be within these areas here, not at the subarachnoid, not where the epidural is, and not where the subdural is. So as far as the subdural, uh, we're obviously looking for that because there's an emergent operative indication uh, uh, that would improve the patient's uh, prognosis. Um, so what are the indications for operative intervention? We'll talk about just subdural. Rarely do you have to intervene on an intraparenchymal bleed. Uh, it, it's almost unheard of uh, to require any intervention on a subarachnoid unless you develop hydrocephalus. Um, and then an epidural uh, is sort of a separate discussion. Um, but uh, subdural, what are the, some of the things that you think of that would guide whether or not you have to do surgery? Midline shift, yeah, I hear that. What else? So, yeah, so GCS, sure. So basically there's CT characteristics, and then there's sort of the combination of CT characteristics and clinical characteristics. So you could, un you could sort of postulate that, well, clearly if it's severe enough, uh, then the benefits would outweigh the risk of uh, invasive surgical uh, intervention. So it ends up that there's really well-defined parameters that if a subdural is, um, if there's greater than five millimeters of shift, so the midline is here. This is the falx uh, cerebri. Uh, so that'll define the midline, and you can clearly see here, I mean, there's usually uh, uh, like a measurement reference on a CAT scan, but that's significantly more. Uh, I mean, this is almost sort of, I would say, real-time real size 
Uh, so that's at least a centimeter, maybe a centimeter and a half of midline shift. And then the other one is if this is greater than uh, 10 millimeters. So five millimeters here, 10 millimeters here. Those are considered just uh, straight up operative interventions. If, if, the, if it's less than that uh, and the patient is comatose, then they generally put a monitor in, either a ventric or a bolt, and if the intracranial pressure is greater than 20, or if the patient is deteriorating, uh, then that's another indication, uh, even if the subdurals are smaller than those parameters would dictate. And then here I just have a picture of what, I mean, we've probably seen these patients at some point in our career post-operatively coming in, but this is, this is what would uh, be the surgical intervention. So briefly, uh, surgeon performs under obviously general anesthesia. A horseshoe creates a horseshoe flap. Skull is exposed here. This is the temporalis bone. And then they actually drill burr holes. Hole, 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 usually three, four. And then they use like uh, a little string saw uh, to cut through this, uh, to take off this bone flap and that's what's called a craniotomy. As long as they're replacing that, it's still called a craniotomy. Uh, if it's kept off, uh, for example, in someone who's expected to have uh, uh, progression of intracerebral edema, uh, they usually refrigerate it or put it in a, uh, the, uh, like a stomach pouch, um, that's called a craniectomy. But in this case, it's a craniotomy, and then here you see they just go underneath uh, uh, the dura, Peel that back, a little flat, and then suck out the clot. And then they generally just replace this, plate it, sutures, uh, and the patient doesn't require uh, uh, additional invasive monitoring. So hopefully that gives you a bit of a perspective on, you know, traumatic brain injury, the types of bleeds that we're looking at. The main operative one would be a subdural, the indications. 10 millimeters or five millimeters or shift or deteriorating in a comatose patient, and that's the indication of a uh, for a craniotomy. Okay. So any other questions on that or? All right. Cool. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Pete. Thank you. Emergency Medical Minute is and always will be about free medical education. Medicine's most prolific podcast is successful because of our supporters, donors, and of course our listeners. Please like us on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. And if you support spreading free medical education, please donate at our website, emergencymedicalminute.com. As always, keep listening.